Okay, in this presentation, we are going to look at the Weibull distribution. So the Weibull distribution has the following parameters, the shape parameter alpha and the scale parameter beta. Okay, so let's make a note of those. The lifetime X in hundreds of hours has a certain of a certain type of vacuum tube has a Weibull distribution with parameters alpha equal to, which is shape parameter, and beta equal to 3, that's the scale parameter. So what we have to do is compute the following, the expected value of x and the variance of x. Now I'll give you the formula shortly. The probability of x less than or equal to 6, the probability of x being between 1.8 and 6, and then finally the probability of x being greater than 3. So let x denote the lifetime in hundreds of hours of a vacuum tube. Given that x is a Weibull random variable alpha, the shape parameter equal to 2, and beta, the scale parameter equal to 3. Now, just as a sort of quick remark, you should always really do something like that at the start of your exam paper. Just don't assume that everyone knows what x automatically means. Short sentence like that. Just give it one minute and just write it out like that, okay? Uh, it might be sufficient to actually just write that, but just check with your examiner. The probability density function of x is given as follows, so we're going to use that. And well, actually, really what we're going to use is this one here. This is the cumulative distribution function of x. So capital F of x equals 1 minus the exponential of x divided by beta to the power of alpha. So it's a complicated looking thing. So just what I've done there is made it a little bit easier to read. It's actually the same expression. 1 minus the exponential of minus x divided by beta okay so x divided by beta to the power of alpha okay so here we can get the mean and the variance of the weibull random variable so the expected value of x is beta times the gamma function of 1 plus 1 over alpha okay and the variance is beta squared times the gamma function of 1 plus 2 over alpha minus the gamma function of 1 plus 1 over alpha to be squared. You might sort of see a bit of a parallel with this here, and you'd be right, okay? But anyway, so uh, we're going to use this expression here when we're calculating this, essentially. So anyway, the gamma function is essentially based on factorials. Actually, to be honest with you, you should actually read up on what the gamma function is altogether, okay? So Because there's quite a lot going on. There's a couple of properties of the gamma function that we will use here. But anyway, so beta equal th is equal to 3, and 1 over alpha is 1 over 2. Okay? So here we have 3 times the gamma function of 1 half plus 1. Okay? The gamma function of 3 over 2, 3 times the gamma function of 3 over 2. Now, this is the thing about the gamma function. Okay? The gamma function of some number alpha plus 1 is equal to the gamma function of alpha times the gamma function of alpha. Okay, Loads of properties like that. That's essentially what we're using here. Okay, So we just sort of tidied up into what we need. But essentially the gamma function of 3 over 2 can be written as 1 half times the gamma function of 1 half. Okay? And remember that 1 half equals 1 half plus 1 equals 3 over 2. So that's what this property is being employed under that system. So another thing we should notice is that the gamma function of 1 half, by definition, is the square root of pi. Okay, so these are two properties that we hopefully should be familiar with. So anyway, we can work it out. 3 over 2 times the square root of pi is 3 over 2 times 1.7725, and that is 2.6588. Okay. So now we're going to get the variance, okay? And so this is beta squared times the gamma function of 2 divided by pi plus 1. That will work out to be the gamma function of 2. And the gamma function of 2 is... 2 minus 1 factorial. Okay, which is 1 factorial, which is 1. Okay. Beta squared is 3 squared, which is 9. Excellent. And here we have 
the gamma function of 3 over 2 squared. That is the square root of pi divided by 2 to be squared. A little bit of calculation work there. Essentially what we get there is this 9 times 1 minus the square root of 3.1416, that's pi divided by 2, all to be squared. Okay. It's actually just a bit of uh, calculator work. It's nothing complicated, really. So, and that works out to be 1.931846. Okay, good. Now, that's that's the hard part, really. So the probability of x less than or equal to 6, that's essentially the cumulative distribution function of 6. Okay, so that is 1 minus the exponential of minus 6 divided by 3 squared. That is, three, uh, 6 divided by 3 is 2, so when you square that, you get 4. So what we end up with here is 1 minus the exponential of minus 4. That is 1 minus 0 0.0183, and that is 98%. 0 0.9817, okay? Here we have part C. What is the probability of x being between 1.8 and 6, okay? So that is... The cumulative distribution function of 6 minus the cumulative distribution function of 1.8. So here we have it there. We've actually worked that out before without the 1. So essentially what is going to happen here is that we just sort of can rearrange it algebraically and just reverse order. So 1.8 divided by 3, that is 0 0.6. And when we square that, we get e to the minus 0 0.6 squared, which is e to the minus 0 0.36. Okay. By the way, that corresponds to 1.8 that's the survival function regarding 1.8 so here we have uh, the number that corresponds to 6 but again it's the survival function of 1. Point, uh, of, of 6 so that is what we worked out before the exponential of minus 4 so here we have it there the exponential of minus 0 0.36 minus the exponential of minus 4 and that is 0 0.6977 minus 0 point zero one eight three and that works out to be almost sixty eight percent zero point six seven nine four finally we're going to get the survival function of three which is one minus the cumulative distribution function of three okay so it's straightforward enough really so the cumulative distribution function is one minus the exponential of Minus 3 divided by 3 squared, which is 1 squared, okay? Now, essentially what happens is that with the survival function, these cancel out, basically. So what we end up with is the exponential of minus 1 squared, and that works out to be 0 0.3679. So that's it.